Hello everybody. Today we will talk about the legal foundation of Palestine as a geopolitical entity within defined borders. We will examine some of the events and treaties that have led to its creation in terms of international law. This is the sequence of events. Uh, first of all, the fact that the Jews all over the world have never stopped claiming their historical home from which they were forcefully expelled several times. Uh, secondly, the fact that despite all of the conquests, Jews have physically remained in Palestine for over 3,000 years. Uh, the Balfour Declaration, the defeat of the Ottoman Empire, the transfer of sovereignty, and the final marcation of the legal borders. Balfour Declaration. It is very important to understand that despite a common belief, Britain did not just declare this because they were nice to the Jews or because Jews have paid them for it, as many suggest. There is a story behind everything. Basically, both the good guys and the bad guys in the first war offered Palestine to the Jews in return for their global support. Allied powers were not in a very good position and were desperate to get anyone they could get on their side. So, on the screen are the few parts of a speech that was given by former Prime Minister of the British Empire on a radio broadcast in 1939. He did it in reaction to the white paper that restricted Jewish immigration to Palestine. With all that, this declaration had no power in terms of international law and Britain did not have sovereignty over Palestine and therefore they had no right to dispose of the lands. The fall of the Ottoman Empire. Now, after the fall of the Ottoman Empire things have changed. Mainly the sovereignty over Middle East was transferred from the Ottoman Empire to the Allied powers, Britain, France, Italy and Japan. Some people suggest that the Ottoman Empire as an emperor never had sovereignty over Palestine in terms of international law. But let's assume it had. It was done in few stages. I do not want to bore you with all the details, but in short, uh, even after the military control was over and Palestine was already governed by civilians, Turkey did not claim it. Therefore, it was agreeing to the subjugation that was done by the Allied powers. Keep in mind uh, that we are talking about Palestine and uh, not the rest of the lands that Turkey lost. In the Treaty of Service, Turkey has officially given up their colonial lands. However, uh, that treaty was annulled later after the revolution in Turkey and a new treaty was signed, the Treaty of Lujan. In that treaty, Palestine was not even mentioned because Turkey did not own it for five years already and never claimed it. More than that, the mandates that were formed by the League of Nations were already in effect. And therefore, according to international law, Turkey did not have sovereignty over the lands anymore. This explains why Palestine was not mentioned in the Treaty of Lujan. So at this point, according to international law, Britain, France, Italy and Japan definitely had sovereignty over Palestine. United States did not, however, uh, because they did not declare war on the Ottoman Empire. Transfer of sovereignty. Now, in order to make Palestine a Jewish state or Syrian Arab state for that matter, the sovereignty needed to pass from the Allied powers to the local people. It was done in San Remo Conference of April 1920 in Italy technically was decided to adopt the Balfour Declaration and give it a legal binding power. Now that these parties had sovereignty over Palestine, they had every right to do so. According to the idea of the mandates, the Allied powers were to administer the lands until the sovereign nations would proclaim independence. This process was in accordance with international law and it was based on Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations. Legal borders were to be marked later. Uh, this document was signed by all four powers. So at this point, sovereignty for Syria and Iraq was passed to the local Arabs of these lands and sovereignty for Palestine was passed to the Jewish nation as a whole. I would like to add a personal note here. The sovereignty for the Jews over Palestine was recognized as de jure, meaning that it was undoubtful legal historical right. However, this could not be said about the Arabs in the Middle East. It is not a secret that Arab presence in these lands is a result of a previous conquest. In this case, Arab sovereignty over Syria and Iraq was de facto. Legal borders. Uh, the borders of the mandates were established at the Franco-British Border Convention of December 1920. Lands were divided between Britain and France only since Italy and Japan did not really take part in uh, liberating this region. Worth mentioning though that there were minor problems with the French that forced Britain to give up some important lands at the north of the Palestine that were defined to be uh, a national home for the Jewish people at San Remo. Technically, even though they were marked as Syria at that convention, sovereignty over those lands can be questioned in international law. The reason for it is that, that at the time of the demarcation process, neither the French or the Brits had sovereignty over the lands. 
their function of the process was not political but only technical. Finally, uh, this is the map of Palestine according to international law if you omit the little problem in the north. And this is in effect even today, but I will explain it in detail in another video. That is all for today. Thank you for watching.